and that should ring a bell from up here. It's just going to be 2, 2 times P plus M. All right? So <clears throat> let's move on and let's talk about uh, the odd integers. It says this is an algebraic definition of odd integer. An integer is odd if and only if it can be written in the form 2t plus 1. Again, that should ring some bells. There's some similarities going on here, right? So it says it can be written in the form 2t plus 1, where t is an integer. But again, you don't have to use t as the variable. Don't get so caught up on uh, these variables and where they're coming from. Um, variables are just representing, in this case, integers. They can be any integer they want. It doesn't matter what letter you use. So, <clears throat> excuse me, item 8. It says, use the expressions for odd integers to confirm the conjecture that the sum of two odd integers is even. So what we're trying to go for now is odd plus odd equals even. So I'm going to start with this expression. I'm going to work my way down to try to get down to an even. I'm going to try to take this expression and manipulate it so that it eventually is in the form of an even integer, which is, by definition, 2 times p, where p is just an integer, or 2 times t, or 2 times m, or 2 times a, or 2 times whatever variable you want, as long as that variable is an integer. So here we go. We have odd plus odd. Um, I'm going to replace these o's with expressions that represent odd integers. So I'm going to say, how about uh, 2, mm, we'll use t, 2t plus 1 plus another odd and different integer, let's say 2 times z plus 1. I like that. We need to take this expression, 2t plus 1 plus 2z plus 1, and we need to get it down in the form of 2 times some integer. And it needs, we need to prove that it's an even integer. So 2 times a. Just some parameters. Make sure that we re remember that um, t and z must be integers. And later on down here, when we get here, um, a must be an integer as well. We're going to get to that point later. So here we go. I'm going to get rid of these parentheses and combine some like terms. I have 2t. There's no other terms with a t, so that's going to not change. I have a 2z. There's no other terms with a z, so that's not going to change. But I have this plus 1 and plus 1. Those are like terms. I'm going to add them up. So now we have 2 times t, 2 times z, plus 2. Every single one of these terms has a 2 as a factor. So I'm going to pull that out. So I have 2 now times the quantity t plus z plus 1. That's factoring. That's applying the distributive property. The reminder of the distributive property is over here. After this, we've got um, 2 times the quantity t plus z plus 1. Again, because of the closure that this set has under the operation of addition, if I take two integers, t and z, it doesn't matter what they are. It can be any numbers, any integers they want to be. When we add them up, it's going to be another integer. t plus z, when we add those up, it's going to be another integer. And then when I add 1, it's just going to make it one more integer larger, and that's it. But it's still going to be an integer. So I'm going to let the variable a, which is an integer, equal to the quantity t plus z plus 1. And I'm going to do a little substitution and say, rather than t, 2 times this big ugly thing, I'm going to say 2 times a. And voila, we've taken this expression of two odd integers and manipulated it so that it is in the form of an even integer, which shows odd plus odd is even. Moving on, number nine, item nine on the next page. Use expressions for even and odd integers to confirm the conjecture that the sum of an even integer and an odd integer is an odd. So here we go. So we're trying to figure out odd plus even is going to give us an 
odd. So up here on the top, I'm going to start with odd plus even. I'm going to work down to an odd integer. I'm going to use 2t plus 1 to represent my odd integer. I'm going to use 2 times p to represent my even. I'm going to rearrange the terms, so I'm going to write 2t plus, and then I'm going to write 2p, followed by the positive 1. Well, if you look, you should notice that the first two terms, 2t and 2p, have a 2 in common. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to factor it out using the distributive property. So my new expression is going to be 2 times t plus p, and then we have that add 1. Well, again, because of the closure x, closure, sorry, because of the, the, uh, the fact that the set of integers has closure under the operation of addition, t plus p is just going to be another integer. Let's call it z. So if, we, if in this example, let z equal t plus p, then I can rewrite this as 2 times z, which is just another integer, plus 1. And there you have it. We now have the algebraic definition of an odd integer. 2 times some integer plus 1. So there we go. We, we just proved algebraically all of the three conjectures. We did it geometrically, and we did, we did it algebraically. I truly hope you can see the parallels. So when we had... Um, and, and when we had even plus even, and that gave us another even, that was the same thing here. Even plus even, we got an even. So we're just creating a bigger rectangle where A, this value, has represented the new length, whatever PMN is. Down here, where we had two odds, We had odd plus odd, and then we worked all the way down to prove that it was an even. Well, same thing here, odd plus odd. So you had this t plus z, that integer plus integer, and then this extra 1. But we knew that that was just going to be an integer. We just let it be a in the end. And then the last one, which we talked about right here. Um, we had an odd and an even. This odd integer, 2t plus 1, and then plus an even, um, there's the geometric representation for that. And so you, you got the same thing. You have the rectangle that is 2 by something, two integers added up, and then you have that plus 1. That plus 1 is what makes it odd. So last two items in this lesson, um, let's read this paragraph. It says, in items five and six, you, did, you developed a geometric puzzle piece argument to confirm conjectures about the sums of even and odd integers. So um, those were all those shapes and putting them together and creating rectangles or rectangles with an extra tile piece. In items seven through nine, you developed an algebraic argument to confirm these same conjectures. Even though one method is considered geometric and the other algebraic, they are often seen as the same basic argument. And I hope that you got that when I was walking you through them and showing you all the similarities. So it says, item 10, explain the link between the geometric and the al algebraic uh, methods of this proof. I hope that after watching this video, you can fill that out. I mean, I literally just talked about it. Um... <clears throat> that an even is the rectangles, the two by something rectangles, whatever that something is, and the odd was the those same rectangles with an extra tile, or they call them puzzle piece, or whatever. So that was that, that was that plus one in the algebraic. Um, some other things that, that I wrote down, um, some of the things says it, 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 it does not matter
how many columns the rectangle had. It always had two rows. So in the end, it was two times however many columns you had. Um, the, the number of columns was the variable, the integer variable, right? The number of columns was the number of integers, and so that's why way back here I put that it had Z columns, this had A columns, and so on and so forth, so that's the number of columns were just those integers. Um, but yeah, so there, there, is, there is a bunch. And item 11, it says, state three theorems that you have proved about the sum of even and odd integers. So the three of them, they are now theorems. And we can say with confidence that an even plus an even is going to equal an even. And an odd plus an odd is equal to an even. And an odd plus an even will equal an odd. I know that's not very uh, mathematically correct. They probably wanted you to write it out and say an even integer plus an even integer will have the sum that is an even integer and so on and so forth but I feel like I've said it so many times we get the point we get the point um, so this was just a great expo or great introduction into deductive reasoning and the thing you have to remember is deductive reasoning is all about facts properties and postulates. It's about following um, the the rules and um, the the logical steps, reasoning, proving um, conjectures, and transforming those into theorems. It's always a legitimate argument where you have statements and you have reasons or justifications of those um, of those reasons or those statements. I'm sorry. So. Hope you had as much fun as I did. Much love. See you in the class.